everyone, this is Janet Wang. I'm a visual artist based in North Vancouver, and I'm working as a district artist in residence with Artists for Kids to bring you AFK from home. Today's project is going to be a printmaking one. We're going to be making simple printmaking plates called collagraphs out of materials that we find in and around our homes. And that's our theme for today. We're going to find patterns and we're going to make patterns and we're going to layer those together. This comes from an artwork called Reorientation that I made in 2016. This is a detail from one of three patterns that I created and these were printed onto big huge pieces of paper that were 3 feet by 12 feet long and each of these hung from a gallery wall so they look like big scrolls. Now this detail that we're looking at here is made out of lots of little paintings and drawings that were put together and repeated. And these repeats will create what we call a pattern. And we'll see that patterns are something that teach your eye how to understand a bigger idea because we'll see all these small things that we see here will tell us what the larger print would have looked like because we understand the repeats here will continue outside of this frame. Now in the same way that a small part of a pattern can tell us a lot about the whole, even a small observation of a pattern within your home or in nature around you can tell you actually what the world is like outside and beyond your family home or maybe beyond your neighborhood where you're walking around. So we might understand that the way we're feeling might be really similar to how a lot of other people are feeling and the way we can find beauty can also help other people find lots of beauty in the world around us. So when we're making a pattern today, we're going to think about using colors that maybe are brighter or more contrasting. We might also think about using shapes that are similar, but they don't necessarily need to be the same. So we'll see here in this pattern, we see lots of curving shapes that repeat like the bridge or the trees or the roofs or the art rock arch. So all these things will help create an overall pattern that will feel like it's got harmony. So that's what we'll be looking for today as we create our patterns. These are some of the materials we'll be using today. You'll want some paper to work with, as well as either some cardboard, cardstock. Um, I've also got some foam packaging. These were all things I found in my recycling that I'm using. We'll also be using some white glue, some paint, and I'm using for this one acrylic paints, but you can also use tempera paint or something else that is around the house that you can work with. You'll want a pen or a pencil and some pencil crayons and maybe one or two brushes to work with. And I will be using for my paint palette and for my water container, just some things from my recycling as well too. Maybe an old yogurt container would work just great. The lid for your palette and then the container part for your water. Okay, so I've got a few of my materials gathered around me now and it's time to start playing on creating our printing pattern. So we're going to be printing on a sheet of paper today. It doesn't have to be a white sheet of paper like I've got here. You can choose to print on something that is colorful. We just want to be careful that um, whatever we're printing on is thin enough so we can do one of the steps we're doing today. So what I'll have done before we get started is I'm going to cut out a piece of cardboard or a flat surface. Now I've got pretty thick corrugated cardboard here with these kind of um, wavy edges inside. Um, you don't need to have something quite so thick. You can use maybe a cereal box that's cut up into your plate, something like that. We just want it to be stiff enough. And what I'm going to quickly do is I'm gonna lay on top of my printing paper and just do a little mark at each corner. This is called a registration mark, and this will let us know where to drop our plate onto our piece of paper. So just a couple quick little marks. Now you may want to have a couple pieces of paper when we're printing. Sometimes the first print doesn't turn out that well. We might need to print it a couple of times. Now I'm going to bring back that piece of cardboard. This is going to be our surface that we're going to lay a bunch of different shapes on top of and those will help us create our collagraph print. So what we can use to create our shapes is we can take more pieces of small cardboard and cut these into shapes. Now, the thicker car the cardboard is, the more difficult it will be to cut. So again, thinner sheets of cardboard are fine. You might just not get as much kind of um, strong detail along the edges, but that will work. And you can see here, I've cut that into some different shapes like this oak leaf here, 
or into a simpler shape there. And I've also cut a few kind of little squiggly shapes and I can start to play with arranging those around my plate. The other type of material we can use is styrofoam that you'll find a lot of times in takeout packaging and maybe sometimes your groceries might come on a foam tray. So I just found some of the flat parts of that. And I find that this is quite nice to print with because it's very easy to cut. And also we can do a little bit of extra detail on them. So the next step I want to show you here is how to cut out our shapes and how to actually add a little extra detail. When we're using the styrofoam plate, we actually have the option because it's so soft to add some extra little line details onto the surface of our shape. So if I were to draw, let's say, a nice trillium leaf, which is kind of heart shaped, so I like these. It might be nice to show hearts all over my pattern. I can actually add a few lines that kind of show the grooves on the leaves themselves. And where I press down with my pencil, because the foam is quite soft, I'm going to create a little impression. And when I roll my paint over top of this shape, the paint will get into those grooves, but it may not have as much contact when I press my paper onto that. So we might get actually a little extra detail there, okay? So you can press pretty hard or soft, depending on how strong you want that line to appear. I'll do another leaf here. Maybe I have enough, enough room on this little piece of foam to add on a nice oak leaf, and it has some nice wiggly kind of curves to it. So I can have some variety of shape on here. Um, I'm going to make a stem, but don't make any details too tiny. They'll be harder to cut out and they might be a bit fragile when we're trying to glue them. So again, I'm just going to add a little extra detail onto that surface. And then all this space out here, I actually like to make a little few random shapes from it as well too. So when I'm cutting this now, I might just cut around this leaf here first, and then I'll try and just cut off some of the bigger chunks of space around it. And I'll try and cut it all at once. I'm taking my time to make the shape nice and clean because that shape is what's going to make the kind of strongest um, form on our plate and these lines will be a little extra. So I'll put those aside. And again, just take away the kind of bigger chunks rather than trying to cut all around this at once, okay? So. Again, the star foam's a little easier to cut. You might find the cardboard, you might need to make your shape simpler if it's a quite thick cardboard or get someone to help you with some of the harder cuts but you can also use a nice thin cardboard from like a cereal box and that's a little easier to trim, okay? So what I'll do is I'll cut maybe about 10 or 15 of these shapes. Um, to add to my pattern, I might just take a few of these little bits here and make some triangles, it's nice and easy, and then I can play around with those too. So I'll get a good variety and then I'll show you how we're going to attach that on to our cardboard plate. Now that I've got all my shapes cut out, I can start to play around with arranging them on the plate. And you'll see I've got some shapes that are similar, but not the same. So we get shapes that repeat, but aren't repetitive. It's an important difference as well too. And so I'll just play around with spacing them out. So there's some variety. And when we're making anything in art and design, we need to think about what we call composition. And that's the arrangement of these different elements in a nice balance and harmony. And that's really what life is all about, finding balance and harmony right now. Okay, I like that. Maybe I'll move a couple of things here and I can move them as I'm gluing them. Now, when I'm gluing them, I like to take my white glue and to put it onto my fancy yogurt lid palette here. Always make sure you close that up so it doesn't dry. 
And then I'm going to grab my brush and just paint that onto the back. And I just find this is a little easier than putting the glue on directly because I can get to right to the edges. And I'll just go ahead and glue all of those on. And we'll give that about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to dry until these aren't sliding around so that when we do our print, they'll be fixed securely, okay? And the foam will take a little longer to dry than your cardboard if you've glued that on. So give it a few extra minutes and you can go have your lunch or something while you're waiting for this. Oh, and this is the nice thing about the foam. If I want to move something around, it's pretty easy to still slide it there. And get right onto that stem. And I can just still even slide those around and wiggle them around until I get them into a few different angles. Maybe I'll push that one a little further away, and this one closer. Okay, so I have one of my plates completed. Here is the one I did using cardboard. And so you can see um, I've got all my shapes arranged. I kind of arranged them so they kind of went out in a radial pattern. That's when they kind of go from the center and they kind of angle out, kind of like a little sunburst. Okay, the next step we're going to take is to try and find some interesting patterns around your house or maybe outside your house. So here I really like this um, pattern here by the tiles. So what I'm going to do is take a, my piece of paper. I've already got my little marks on that paper. And what I'll do is take a pencil crayon and I'm not going to use it straight down the paper. I'm going to hold it sideways so that I get all the pencil crayon kind of color rubbing against this pattern. And I'm going to try and roughly fit it within the frame of where my printing plate will be. If it goes a little outside, that'll be fine. And we're just creating another pattern layer that we're going to then print on top of. So we're going to have some layers to this. So you can go ahead, you can maybe use more than one pattern if you choose. I'm going to use the exact same one all the way throughout, but you can look for some wood textures. You can see what patterns you can find in maybe different um, fabrics around your house perhaps. It might be a little hard to do the rubbing, but you can find lots of surfaces where you might find these interesting patterns that you can use. Now I was doing some experiments before already with my other plate, as you can see. I was just testing to see with a few scrap pieces of paper how much paint I need to add on to this and how wet the paint needs to be. Now I found if you put too little and it's a little dry, you might not get a good amount of detail. If it's too wet, you're going to get um, something that's not going to run and a lot of the definition might be lost. So you might want to keep your paint just kind of not too wet, not too dry, and again that might be about experimenting. So again, you know, when you're making art, sometimes the first time won't turn out perfectly. Just in the same way, you know, when we're doing anything, that needs some practice. Writing things, playing a sport, learning an instrument, a lot of what we do in school. So just a couple trials here. We'll see if this one works now too, because this is my first time trying this plate. And you'll see that some of my paint is going around onto the plate itself and off of the shapes. That's fine, that kind of detail won't show up. And this one's a little drier, so I'm gonna do this pretty quickly because I'm using acrylic paint, which dries pretty quickly. Um, if you're using some different type of paint, it might not dry quite as quick. And I can see some of those first ones are getting a bit drier, so I'm gonna give them a quick little coat like so. And then what I'm going to do is grab a scrap piece of paper. Yeah, I'll do it on this one here. This is my kid's spelling test. I already did one test on it. I'm going to just quickly flip my print plate over. This is where you would line up the corners to your registration marks. Give it a good bit of press on there. You might want to go back and forth, trying to get as much contact as possible between your paper and your plate. I might even turn that over. You can see some of my previous experiments and give a little bit of a rub with your hand. Just keep your hand flat. And then we'll peel and reveal and see what's showing up. Okay, so I'm getting kind of an interesting print. You can actually see some of the lines 
of the cardboard on there too. I think I need to add a bit more paint and a little bit more water. So with my next trials, I'll do a couple more trials, see what um, kind of texture and how much paint works best. And then we'll do one final pull together. Okay, so I did a test, found I needed a little bit more water. So that's an important thing just to test to see um, what's gonna work best. I found the cardboard also dried a little quicker, so I need to go really fast with that one as well too. A lot of the cardboard will absorb more of the paint. So this is my styrofoam one, and I really like what happened with that one. You can see a lot of the detail quite clearly. I like some of the areas where it didn't quite show up as much, so we get different kind of textures. They're a little bit more stamped. So I think I'm ready to try this with my good copy. So again, you can always reuse your plate a few times, make a few versions, and definitely experiment a little bit, just like we have to try a few things sometimes to um, make them our best. Artwork is the same way, and printmaking is kind of fun because you never know what you're gonna get, and it always takes a few tries. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water again to my paint here, just to get the right consistency. Really quickly brush onto that. So I'm gonna move my plate off here quickly. I'm gonna lay down my sheet that has the rubbing on it and I can see my registration marks. I'll flip over my plate, match it up to those marks and then I'll again press and get good contact between my plate and all those raised shapes. And I found it just really helped to flip the whole thing over and just to gently check to if there's good contact. You actually could probably see that through your paper a little bit. Okay, and I'll give that a second kind of, don't let it sit there too long. Maybe if it's there a few minutes, it will start to dry or maybe you might lose some of your detail. I think the paint kind of is running everywhere. Oh, and look at that. Oh, I'm gonna quickly grab a little bit more detail there. I was still lined up so I can do that. There we go. Didn't wanna lose my little squiggle in the middle there. So I think that turned out pretty interestingly and not perfect. I don't think artwork has to be perfect. Again, a few mistakes along the way, a few experiments along the way. And you know, we can try to um, reach out to people and you know, sometimes we might need to say things differently, uh, try out different ways of communicating. And that can be an interesting way to think about how we actually can show things. Lots of different tries there.